Welcome to part four, I believe, of my Toyota Hilux uh, overland slash hunting slash outdoor slash weekend warrior build series. And um, in this video, we're gonna be discussing electrical installations. In the previous video, I ran through some of the internal uh, storage solutions inside the canopy. And in the video before that, we spoke about the canopy itself. And you will have noticed that I had some like touch activated lights around the, the, the actual doors of the canopy. And you might wonder, you know, where are those lights connected? Are they connected to the main battery in the front under the, the bonnet or the hood? Or are they connected to something else? And the answer is no, they are not connected to the battery under the bonnet. Do not connect anything to the battery under the bonnet unless it's stuff like headlights, which you use while you're driving. Because if you drain that, that main battery and you're out in the middle of nowhere and you can't start your vehicle, you might be in big trouble. This happened to me once upon a time in Arizona. I was out with uh, Dylan who works at Eggins of Arizona and they took me out into the desert. And we left something on in the, in the truck and we, pff, funnily enough, blasted all our water with water bottles with shotguns thinking, oh, you know, we're about to leave. Let's just blast the water and then try to start the vehicle and didn't start and we actually got into a bit of trouble. If, if someone hadn't driven past a very lonely road in the, in the middle of the, or late at night, we would have been stranded there overnight and possibly for a few days. So don't connect stuff to your main battery that you plan to use when your vehicle's off. There are alternative solutions. For example, you can do what I've done and you can have a dual battery system where you've got an auxiliary battery in the back of the vehicle that everything in the back is connected to and when you drive that battery is charged either directly from your alternator or charged from your main battery while you drive but in order to do that you do also need a, a, a battery isolator or a dc dc charger like the one i've got here to ensure that if you drain this battery you don't also drain your main battery because then you're back to square one with the same problem so you need a way to disconnect your main battery from this battery when they're done charging. Something like this, which is an intelligent system, does that for you and we'll run through this unit a little bit later. But let, let's get inside here and just show you exactly what I have. So I will admit that this is not done very neatly and I could have done it better. But inside this battery box is a 105 amp hour AGM deep cycle battery. Now an AGM battery is essentially a sealed battery. It's a bit different to the battery in the front of your vehicle. The battery in the front of your vehicle is made to be heat resistant. The AGM batteries aren't, but we don't need the battery to be heat resistant because it's not in the engine bay. But anyway, the capacity is 105 amp hours and it's inside this battery box, which you won't see the display very well there, but I've got the battery, uh, like how the, the voltage and, and how full it is, and I can check a few things on there, which is not really necessary. Well, I'll show you why later, but that's the battery inside there. This battery box I bought from 4x4 Mega World, and it's slightly customized, but it's more or less standard, and it is strapped down to the bed of the truck so that it can't shake around too much. Would I suggest putting your battery in a battery box? Yes, quite simply because if you spill water, like I did the other day, I basically forgot to tighten something and for, ended up having 40 liters of water inside the bed of my truck, your battery will at least not be drowned in water. <laughs> so that helps. Now, connected to this battery is my DC to DC charger. This one is made by National Lunar. It's a South African brand, and this is a brilliant, brilliant uh, unit over here. You do get other ones made by SeaTech, uh, Red Arc is very popular in Australia. I'm not sure what you guys in the US are using, but I know National Luna is becoming quite popular in the US as well. But this is a 25 amp charger. And basically what that means is when I start my engine, this charger recognizes that the ignition is turned on and it starts taking a, a drawing amps from the uh, alternator and at 25 amps, it can charge that battery. Now, 25 amps is, is pretty fast. So to put in perspective, a normal, 
me just talk to you directly here. One of those normal battery chargers that you plug into your wall socket to charge a like a battery pack or something, you know, those things that you connect to keep your battery healthy. Those things normally um, only supply like five amps or less. So it's very slow. You can have the thing plugged in the whole day and your battery still won't be charged fully. But at 25 amps, and I know National Luna also makes one at 40 amps, when you start driving, this battery will be charged quite quickly. And that's really important because if you're not driving the entire day and you've just camped for two days and your battery is pretty low, um, you need to be able to charge it quickly so when you get your next campsite you've got a full battery or at least close enough to full. What you do not want to do is drain this battery below 50% because a lead acid battery below 50% you're going to start to damage it and it's not going to get many cycles. So DC DC charger every time I start the car and start driving this gets filled quickly and it's good to know that this battery is going to be healthy and fully charged. So the National Lunar DC-DC charger, you can see it's got a few modes. It's got a, a lithium battery setting. It's got a wet battery, which is like the battery in the front of your car. It's got an AGM slash gel battery, which is the one we're using. And then there's another one, which I think is lead crystal, but I'm not 100% sure. And then the symbols on the right, you've got that symbol to say that the alternator is being used to draw power. Symbol below that, which tells you that the solar input is operational which is great you have a solar input that you can charge this battery direct from a solar panel in and then you've got a charge indicator and float indicator which tells you that the battery is full that's pretty cool so when i had this battery uh, charger installed at 4x4 mega world they included a solar input right there so i could plug in a solar panel straight into a brad harrison plug and there's also a bunch of inputs there and this, this battery charger is essentially connected via a very thick, I think like a 16 gauge or something, cable to the battery in the front of the vehicle. That's how they're connected. Just behind my kitchen unit, I have a battery monitor connected uh, via cable from my DC-DC charger. And if I turn that on, I can see my voltage of both my main battery and my auxiliary battery. And I can switch through different viewing modes. Um, I tend to like to keep it like this. Main reason is if I'm driving I can actually just look in my rear view mirror or turn my head around and I can see at what voltage my battery is or what amperage my battery is charging at. So that's a 0, 0.0. When I start driving it often goes up to 25 and then I can see when the battery is on float. In other words fully charged and I can see what my voltage is. So that's super nice to have. Thank you National Luna for thinking about these things. Get someone who knows what they're doing to do your electrical installations for you because if you don't do it properly, it, it could be quite risky. Um, you know, you do not want something catching fire while you're driving. I was very close to this. My previous vehicle, the Ford Ranger, whoever did the, the auto electrical work on that thing did a useless job the cables were basically burnt all the way through and it's that vehicle is very close to catching on fire. So I've learned things the hard way. Do it properly, use the right gauge wiring, crimp things properly, solder things properly, go to someone who knows what they're doing. I do have an input here for a, a CTEC charger that plugs into my main supplied home that only charges at like, I think, 2 amps or 2.5 amps. So when I am at home for long periods of time, let's say I'm traveling overseas and the, the vehicle's parked inside that CTEC charger plugs in directly here from the wall socket and I know that my battery will stay fully charged which is awesome. The battery box you'll see has a few Brad Harrison plugs on as well. It's also got a 12 volt USB and Heller plug output and basically what I've done there is that I've connected all the lights in the canopy to the to the Heller output I've connected the fridge and freezer to the one of the Brad Harrison plugs. We cut off the normal 12 volt plug because let's be honest, those 12 volt plugs just come out so easily when you go over bumps and stuff. They're pretty useless. Changed that to a Brad Harrison, plugged it into the Brad Harrison connector and the USB is not really being used and I'll show you why. As you can see, we are on the side of the vehicle right now. And if I come in close here, you will see 
that there's a cable that's running from the battery on the far opposite side and it's running all the way here and up here and is connected to this guy this is a goal zero yeti it's one of the best purchases i've ever made i actually bought this while doing hunting trips in places with no power so it can charge cameras over a few days and you can thank the yeti for being able to film those long oxwagon diary series because this basically kept all the drones and everything charged What's great about it is that it's got all the outputs. It shows your battery capacity, shows how many watts you're drawing, um, how many amps you're drawing, all of that stuff. And it's removable. So I can pick this up. I can take it inside to a, an ox wagon or a cottage, or if I'm staying somewhere other than on in my vehicle, I can remove it. But what's great about it is it's got a tethering port. And with this cable, I can tether this battery to the main battery which essentially gives me not 105 amp hours but more like 140 amp hours because this is a 33 amp hour battery and when i charge the other battery because they're tethered this one the the voltage essentially equalizes and this one charges as well which is great so as you can see now i'm charging another battery because this camera is about to die and I'll have to change it out, but I can do that because it's right here. So strongly suggest doing this. I don't know many people that are doing this, but it's just an awesome way of, of adding battery capacity and also um, having a removable power source that you can easily pick up and move around. And of course, these lights, these are also made by National Lunar, from what I remember, um, which is the same company that makes the DC-DC charger. I can turn these lights on three different settings and if I hold in this touch bar it goes red and the red light is basically for when there are insects and that don't attract as many insects and I've tested it this still attracts some insects but not as much as the white light so that's great to have is there anything that I would change with my electrical setup yes there is if I could do things again I would go with um, the National Lunar battery box, which essentially has the battery and the DC-DC charger connected to each other. So essentially you just have your, your thick cable running from your um, engine bay with a Brad, Brad Harrison connector, and you connect them up whenever you have that, um, that battery box um, close to it. That just keeps everything together. It's just a more managed system. And it's got all the outputs as well so i think uh, one day eventually i will upgrade to that but for now this is working pretty well the main reason I, I stuck to the way it is is because i had already bought a battery and a battery box by the time i started doing research on the dc dc chargers but now you know so you don't have to make the same mistake look at the national lunar uh, battery box with a built-in charger it's a pretty awesome setup and then some of you might want to know how long does this whole thing last when I am leaving lights on, leaving the fridge and freezer on, opening the fridge and freezer all the time to access food and drinks, um, charging phones, charging cameras, all of that, actually it lasts for longer than you think. With the 105 amp hour battery, and obviously with the other one connected as well, which is like 140 amp hours or so, um, I've gone for like three days, three full days, and the battery capacity is still not, it's still like maybe 55, 60%. Um, if it's anything below 50%, you, you kind of want to stop because you can start to damage your battery and shorten its lifespan. But to be honest, I, I've never really gone below 50%. As long as I drive a bit every now and again, it charges the battery up pretty quickly. Will I put a solar panel on the roof or have a solar panel, solar blanket that I can fold up and leave somewhere? I don't think there's much need for it right now, just because... Um, a lot of the camping I do, I'm driving every few days and, and charging stuff quickly. However, if I'm planning to do a trip where I am driving short distances and camping for longer periods of time, I will probably need a solar panel just to top up everything. So I will look into that in the future, but for now it's not really necessary. And then last question, is there need to upgrade to a better battery? Because a lot of you know that, that these uh, AGM and lead acid batteries, they have a bit of a lifespan. They may only last you a couple of years. Um, lithium batteries are better. A lithium battery 
you can use more of its capacity so although this is a 105 amp hour battery i can only use 50 percent of its capacity so i'm essentially only getting like 50 amp hours worth of use out of it whereas a lithium battery i can use more and lithium battery is much lighter and lithium battery lasts much longer so why not just go with a lithium battery well lithium batteries are flipping expensive <laughs> so perhaps when this dies i'll look at a lithium battery i didn't want to spend too much money on something that i i didn't have a lot of experience with but now that i've learned a bit more about how these things work i may bite the bullet next time and buy a lithium battery but for now pretty happy at least i've got a battery charger system which is which has a setting for lithium batteries if you don't have that setting and you're just connecting your main battery straight to this battery and you, you're using a lead acid battery and a lithium battery tethered together you're going to damage something or it's not going to charge properly but with a dc dc charger that's got all the correct programs and all the correct settings and it's designed to to be used to be connected to your main battery and using a lithium battery together it will work very well so those are the kind of things you need to consider oh and by the way um, all the national lunar stuff is available from outdoor warehouse in south africa so if you're in south africa outdoor warehouse has all this stuff and their prices are pretty competitive as well and that is where we are going to end this one today i hope you found it informative Make sure you hit that subscribe button for the next video, which will be a discussion about tires and suspension. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.